Okay, so today we're going to talk about Microsoft Copilot. We're actually going to be talking about two parts of Microsoft Copilot. First, we're going to talk about what Microsoft Copilot is. There's a couple different camps of people when they come to Copilot. Some of them never heard of it at all. Some of them have heard the name and don't know quite what it is. And then others have heard it, kind of know what it is. So we're going to dig into what Microsoft Copilot is. But then the second part, we're going to talk about the security concerns of Microsoft Copilot. We're going to talk about what exposure your company has when using Microsoft Copilot, and then what you can do to help mitigate those risks. Now, those of you who have seen our webinar on AI in general and how hackers can use AI, this is not going to cover that same material. So if you have not seen that webinar, definitely when you're done with this one, go and watch that one because that talks about much more in depth of actually you, what the hackers are doing. We're gonna talk just specifically about Microsoft Copilot in this webinar. Okay, so with that, let's get going. So first, let's talk about why Microsoft Copilot, or just about Microsoft Copilot in general. So Microsoft Copilot is an AI-driven support for Microsoft products. It's using AI technology, mostly chat GPT on the back end, for it is going to help you automate a lot of the tasks that you're doing manually. We're gonna show you what some of that automation looks like. It's actually really, really cool. It's also going to work on collaboration. I'm gonna start with a demonstration on the collaboration part, because I think this is the first thing that your team is going to take the biggest advantage of with Microsoft Copilot, and I think it's gonna have the biggest impact on it. The other thing, as you can see from this chart on the right uh, hand side of the screen, it integrates with all of the Microsoft applications. This is something that Microsoft did really, really well. They announced and launched Copilot across their entire platform. They looked at every part of the Microsoft 365 ecosystem and said, where would AI benefit the most? The next thing that Microsoft Copilot does that traditional AI does not do is that it has the ability to go into the data of your company. We're gonna show you what that looks like and why this is beneficial to you. What are some of the drawbacks? Well, the privacy. We're gonna talk about the privacy concerns that Copilot brings, and there are more concerns than what traditional AI can do because of those same robust features that we just talked about. There is a bit of a learning curve. Like any Microsoft product or any product, this is a brand new integration, so not everything is in entirely intuitive on how to use the product. We're gonna go through some demos on some quick things so you can kind of get the gist of it, but is this not gonna be an in-depth training on Microsoft Copilot? There is an additional cost in subscription in order to get this product. It is not free, it's not, an, uh, not a free add-on, but you, it is an add-on that you pay for. We're gonna talk about what it takes to get that. We're just gonna to touch on it real quick. Then we're gonna talk about this right now. Uh, we're gonna talk about errors and hallucinations. So. This I'm gonna talk about right off the bat. So this is one of the inherent downsides of AI in general is hallucination. So what a hallucination is, it's when you're asking Microsoft Copilot for something and it actually invents what it wants as the answer. I'm gonna give you a real life example of this. So let's talk about a, a law firm and a law case. So. This actually happened in the real world. So a law firm was presented by, by, um, by their client and they needed to do representation. And so one of the legal experts there went up to ChatGPT and said, hey, we have this case and we're trying to present this case and present these arguments. Tempt it into ChatGPT. ChatGPT did what it does best. It came up with all these cases and all these references and all these things that were relevant to the case at hand. Lawyers, great, awesome puts them in, files the, files the suit. The opposing counsel looks at this and says, oh my gosh. And then they start re doing their own research. And what they found is that they had trouble locating all the cases that were referenced in the opposing counsel. And so then they went to the attorneys and said, hey, yeah, you have all these things, all these cases that you've cited, but we can't find the backup documentation for them. Can you provide us with the that backup documentation that you used in order to find these cases? Well, this is where things went sideways because ChatGPT actually made up 
these cases. They didn't exist in the real world. There was no basis for them. What ChatGPT has said, oh, well, you want me to make an argument for you. I can't find data that supports your argument. I'm going to create that data for you. And so it actually went through and created names, people, places, everything that was required to create that argument. The law firm actually ended up making the news with this and it ended up being a, a, a bad situation for them. That's where hallucinations come into play in AI. So AI technology in general is inherently has its flaws. Okay, real quick on Braver Technology. Braver Technology is a managed service provider. We, have, uh, we primarily are focused in the Northeast region of the US. We do have clients that are across the country. We have clients of all sizes and all shapes and all industries. We, are, we do pretty much everything that you could think of that you would need from a managed service provider. We have help desk, we have 24 by seven live help desk. We have co-managed support, IT support. We have app dev, we have web design, we have training. Everything that you could think of for your IT needs, it's a high probability that we uh, provide it. We've been in the industry for 30 years. For those of you watching this on YouTube, simple request. Can you like this video and subscribe? This really helps us a lot to drive the content and make this uh, content worthwhile. We provide all of our content for free, all of our training. It's not gated. It's there for everybody to take advantage of. This is the one ask that we have to that helps us promote and keep it going is to like and subscribe to this video. Okay, enough about Braver. Now let's move on. What are we going to talk about today? So we're going to talk about what Microsoft Copilot is. So we're going to talk about that first. What is it? Why would you use it? And then the productivity features that it has. We're going to talk about the security risk. Then once we talk about how great it is, then we're going to talk about the security that goes along with it. But then we're going to talk about how to lock it down and how to take how to mitigate those security risks and then talk about the general security and health of your network. So first, what is Microsoft Copilot? So Microsoft Copilot is a, an AI driven uh, platform as we as we spoke about and there's a lot of different use cases for it. We're going to go into first I'm going to start off by showing you like little quick demos of the product and when you would use it. First thing I want to talk about is collaboration and using this in teams. And I want to talk about that this part first because I think it's the one that is probably the most useful part of it. Here's what that looks like. So let's say you had a Teams meeting. Well, you can actually go after the Teams meeting, you can go into the recap that meeting. And as you can see, it'll actually group all of the discussion topics of that meeting and who talked about it. Then it actually creates follow-up tasks based on the transcripts of the meeting. But that's not all. It will actually, when you go into those sections of those meetings, it will actually jump the video to the spots where it's recapping. So you can jump right to that part of the video that you think is relevant for what you're doing. Like I said, it will actually take all of that and recap it and go, this is cool. It also tells you about who's been talking the most in the meeting, which is also very interesting. Let's dive a little bit more into what you do. So let's say, so we just saw where it would tell you the to-do items. You can actually go another level where it actually takes it, okay, these are the key topics. Now, can you create a, chart of all the to-do items and who has what to do. This is all automated. This is something that somebody would normally do manually after a meeting to have the takeaways and the follow-ups. It's actually automated with Copilot. You can actually go through and have this, have it go through previous meeting data and use it to prepare for the current meeting. So let's say you have something regarding a customer or an internal process. You can say, hey, my next meeting is on this process. Can you help me prepare for it? It'll actually give you content to talk about in that meeting. Next, if you, let's say you weren't in the meeting, but you knew that you had items that you had to do, you just had to miss it. You can actually go in to Copilot and say, hey, I didn't have this meeting. What are the specific takeaways and things that I needed to do for this particular meeting? What are the to-do items that I had? It'll actually automatically find that. Let's say that you're going to go into a meeting and you're trying to find what to talk about. You want a discussion. So you can literally go into Copilot and say, hey, we're, we want to talk about revamping our website. We want to talk about redoing our sales process. We want to talk about whatever. Give us topics to talk about. It will actually generate talking points 
for you to have in your meeting based on what is available on the web. And then scheduling. You have uh, 30 people that you're trying to schedule. Copilot will actually go and not only just look at the free busy calendar, but will actually do it, actually look at it intelligently and say, okay, when is the best time to have this meeting? So that's just some of the collaboration part of it. I want to talk about something that I think is really, really cool next, which is the content building part of Copilot. I'm going to show you demonstrations that are using Outlook, but you can also use this for Microsoft Word or any other part of Microsoft Office. I'm going to show you Outlook because I think it's actually really cool. So let's say you want to draft an email and you want to make it have a good content. You can actually do that just for four or five words and Copilot will write the rest of it. So what does that look like? Here's what it looks like. So you can actually just type in four or five, six, seven words of, hey, I want to draft an email about this. And then you hit the button. Copilot is actually going to generate suggested email for you to write. And it'll actually put it in there. Let's go one step further. Let's say that you look at that and you're like, you know, I'd like to actually reformat it to look a little bit different. Maybe you want to make it look a little friendlier. So you can actually type right in the screen and tell Copilot, hey, I would like to rewrite this in more of a friendly tone. It will take the existing topic, whether you wrote it or, or Copilot wrote it, regenerate it and make it actually friendly. You can say, I want it to be more detailed. I want it to be whatever. It'll actually do that for you. Now, the next one is either good or bad, depending on, on who you are. It's actually pretty kind of a fun thing that you could, you could actually do with it, but it kind of shows the power of Copilot. You can actually tell Copilot, listen, I want you to generate this email, but I want it to be a poem. Copilot will actually generate the email in the form of a poem. Now, let me tell you, our salesperson got a hold of this feature. And for a week straight, he sent everybody emails that were in the form of a poem. It was funny at first, but then got annoying over time. And then it got funny again. All right. So here's another thing that Copilot can do that I think a lot of you will find really useful. Have you ever received those long long emails or they're just written out forever and have so much detail in them, typically from the CEO. Copilot will actually read that long email and actually summarize it for you. It will actually cut down the content and actually give you the summary. You can actually even say, hey, listen, what in this email is actually relevant for me? Where are they talking about me specifically? It will actually summarize the entire email for you. I think that's really cool. Now, let's talk about something really neat that Copilot can do, automation. So let's say you just had a meeting with a client and you took the notes in OneNote. It could be anything, but let's just say it's OneNote. You can actually go into Copilot, go into Word, and say, look at the notes from this meeting in OneNote. I want you to draft an entire proposal based on that meeting that I just had. And as you can see on the screen, it is a real looking proposal. That is actually a very nice looking proposal for this client, but that's not even the final thing that you could do with this. Let's say then you go one step further and you take that proposal that Copilot created and you upload it into PowerPoint and you say, I would like a PowerPoint presentation based on this proposal. And look what happens. Copilot is actually going to take the content of the proposal and create a PowerPoint presentation based on that content. So let's talk about this. You had a meeting with a client, you took notes in OneNote, asked Copilot to create a proposal, then had the proposal and asked Copilot to create a presentation. You didn't have to do anything. It was all automated. That is part of the power. Okay, we're gonna go into one more thing, one more demonstration of what Copilot can do, and that is with spreadsheets. So there's a couple key things that you can do with spreadsheet. One, you can see this spreadsheet has a lot of data on it. You can actually go into Copilot and say, hey, listen, I want you to look at the spreadsheet and give me an analysis of the data that's in the spreadsheet. And it'll actually automatically analyze it for you. Next thing that you can do in Excel that is really cool, is not everybody is really great at writing formulas in Excel. So you can actually take text and write in the formula, write in what you want the formula to do. And Copilot will write that formula for you that you can then paste into the block.
All right, so what are some case scenarios when you use Copilot? So we're going to go through these kind of quickly um, on some real life examples. So let's start with education. So let's say that you are, are a teacher, but this could be anything. This could be that you being at a, at a company and preparing document, preparing a presentation for your team. But let's say for, for a teacher and your class is going to be discussing the Amazon jungle or the Model T Ford car or these American Revolution, you can actually ask Copilot to help prepare the presentation for the classroom or prepare the workload for the classroom. And it'll actually give you those guidelines. Let's say you're in the healthcare facility and you have a, you're trying, you have patient that is going to have a knee surgery, let's say, and you want to see all the complications that happen with the knee surgery. This is where Copilot is actually more powerful than typical AI or ChatGPT. So ChatGPT will go out on the web and look for all the things that are relevant for that. Copilot goes one step further. Copilot looks at your own data internally in your own company. Let's say that it'll actually go through all the emails to a particular patient and say, hey, this is what we've told this patient via email before, or these are the suggestions that we had. It'll actually look at your own data, not just on the web on things to recommend for rehabilitation after that knee surgery, or what medications are okay, uh, or have been worked in the past, or what the side effects of those medications would be. Retail industry. So Amazon has always been really good at this, is looking at where the clients are going to be and try and beat them there, right? Now you can actually use Copilot to do that and research, hey, what is going on? What trend analysis is happening? And Copilot will come back and analyze your data and say, well, you know, based on what I'm forecasting, our sales of umbrellas are skyrocketing in August. So maybe you should start stocking up on them in July. In finance, we showed a demonstration of going through a spreadsheet and going through a presentation and trying to analyze that. And what Copilot will do is basically look at this massive sums of data and actually analyze it and say, hey, your thesis is correct, or no, you should consider this. One thing Copilot won't do, and AI in general won't do, is they have safeguards in place that if you ask them, hey, what stocks should I be buying? It won't tell you that, but it will tell you. But what you can ask it is, hey, based on what stocks have done well in a recession in the past, and it will tell you what stocks did well in the past. So it'll tell you things in, in, um, in the history, but it won't tell you anything predicting on future. That's a safeguard that's in place. We're gonna talk about some safeguards um, for AI in general. Customer support. So this is kind of a key one that I think we're gonna see a lot of. So right now, what we all see is that when we either call into a phone system and or open up a chat discussion with a website, what does it do? This is, hey, give me a brief description of what you're trying to solve. And it looks for keywords in there. And based on those keywords, it gives you canned responses. Those keywords, oh, you're calling about a reservation. Did you know that you can do reservations of this? And they're all canned responses. Well, AI doesn't give canned responses. AI is interactive. It's more like talking to a human being. So you can, so it doesn't just look at the word reservation. It looks at the whole context of the chat and says, oh, well, you are trying to change just a single person on this flight and then not the whole flight. Well, actually, you can do that by going into our website and doing this and this and this. And what you want to do is like, so it's very meticulous in what it does. So it's more directly focused and more impactful to the clients when they're typing in rather than just canned res responses. For marketing, really clear. You can actually do demographic researches. Let's say you have a particular product and it reaches a particular demographic. You'd say, what parts of the country have demographics that fit this particular age range or this particular gender or whatever it may be that your marketing team is looking for? And that helps you look for a particular. Or let's say that you're going, hey, we're trying to target this particular geography. What's important on this geography? Well, they are typically Red Sox fans or the typically Patriots fans or the typically Yankees fans, whatever it may be. It'll actually help give you market research. Human resources. So think about this. A lot of the times in hiring, and this is a big part of Braver, when we're hiring people, we want them to have a certain personality. We want them to be friendly. We want them to work and meld with that personality. Well, what if you could use AI as part of your interviewing process so that when you're talking to people, AI will analyze when they're talking and give you feedback 
on their personality? How does their culture fit? Based on what they're saying and based on the every conversation that you have in your company, how do they fit together? That'd be really cool, wouldn't it? Okay, so how do you get started? This is not a sales pitch. This is just more just how do you get started because it's one of the questions that, that we typically get. So first off, as I mentioned, AI is not free. You have to have it as part of a, sub, a subscription with Microsoft. So these are some of the subscriptions that include Microsoft Copilot. This is as of this recording, so it's certainly going to change over time because Microsoft changed the products. But as of this recording, this is the plans that have it. These are applications that you may be required to have certain features within Copilot. It doesn't mean that you absolutely have to have them. It means in order to take advantage of certain features of Microsoft Copilot, you may have to have these applications. And then once you have that, it has to be configured. You, some, the administrator has to go in and then actually configure your Microsoft Copilot in order to work with your environment. So those are the three steps that you have. So now let's talk about the second part. Let's talk about the risks associated with AI. Again, we have a much more in-depth webinar on AI and the security related AI, which I highly recommend you watch. These are gonna be specific to Copilot. So the first question that everybody should be asking is, is Copilot safe? And the answer is yes, as long as it's set up correctly. We're gonna talk about that right now. So Copilot only pulls from the data that's part of your, your system. It doesn't pull from somebody else's Microsoft data. It only pulls from data in your system and parts of the applications that you have. If you don't own that application, it obviously won't pull from it. You are in control of the data. We're gonna talk about that in depth in a few moments. Copilot monitors for abuseful, harm, harmful uses. So it uses part of its AI technology to actually look for abuses that are happening in AI. It is based on the access level of the user. This is gonna be really important. We're gonna talk about this a lot. I'm actually gonna reiterate this many times in the next, in the next uh, for the rest of this presentation, but it looks on the current user data access that it has and utilizes that uh, as what it pulls from. And it does meet the requirements for regulatory compliances such as HIPAA. It does includes harmful content filtering, which is obviously uh, a work in progress at all times, but for the most part, it does have some harmful content processing built into it. So what are some of the data concerns that you have? Well, you wanna analyze your sensitive data protection and what you have. We're gonna talk about that in a moment. Your intellectual property. What do you have that is only geared towards your company. What is your IP? External threats, like everything else, we have to worry about external threats coming in and breaking in and using AI to advantage. So for instance, it's extremely important that you have two-factor authentication. I'll probably talk about that again before the before we get uh, before we leave here. But let's say somebody does get in from the outside and they have access to Copilot, well, then they can use Copilot to actually investigate all the data without them having to do it themselves, just like you would. They could say, hey, could you give me a list of all the vendor invoices that we've emailed out in the last year? And Copilot will come back with that. So compliance, you wanna make sure that if you are regulated that Copilot meets that compliance. It does meet a lot of the compliances that are out there. It has good data utilization, it does have data protection, and it does have data encryption built into it. These are all really key parts of it. And you want to make sure it does have administrative oversight, but you also want to have that as well, as long as access management. So what are some of the questions that you should be asking regarding risk? So first thing you want to do is how does your organization define sensitive data? Now, different companies are going to have different definitions for their sensitive data. Some of them might have intellectual property that they consider sensitive. So one of them might be a construction company that doesn't have any intellectual property, but their payroll is, is very sensitive. You want to go through your organization and define what is that sensitive data that you have. Next, you want to look at how data flows through your company. Why is that important? Well, again, Copilot is going to look at where how look at all of your data that the user has access to. So you want to know, okay, when a quote comes in from a client, where does it start? Where is it finished? Because either I do want Copilot to be able to search it or I don't. You want to make sure that you understand that now. Where does the sensitive data exist? This is really, really, really important. I said I'm going to talk about this in different ways in different forms throughout this, this meeting. But 
here's what Copilot does that makes it so powerful. Copilot will look into any data that this user has access to and give the results of that data. You want to make sure your users do not have access to sensitive data that they are not supposed to. They might have access to data that sensitive data now, but they just don't know that they have access to it. Copilot is going to find that data. It is going to search through your system and find that data if they have access to it. So you want to make sure that it is locked down. So this is how you want to talk about how are users granted access to that data. If a, when a new user is onboarded or an existing user is onboarding, what is the process to give them access into that data? And how do you make sure that they only have access to the data that they need? What are the sharing policies within your organization? How are people allowed to share content? Because when they share content, this is where Copilot will find that content. All right, so what do you want to talk about when locking down Copilot? So access control. So limiting access to authorized users. Again, this is where Copilot is the most powerful, but the most potentially dangerous part of it is that you want to make sure that your users, again, only have access to the data you want to have them through having proper permissions and proper security in place for that for those users. You want to make sure that they only that they are basically being very diligent on what they share and what they have access to. And of course, communication, you want to make sure it's all secure, right? So when you have, especially a remote workforce coming in, you want to make sure they're only using HTTPS. I'd be surprised if they weren't in this day and age, but we got to put it down there just in case. Role-based security. This is really, really important. And we don't see enough customers. When we take on customers, we don't see enough of this happening. What role-based security means is that when you take on a new person in a new position, it is better to have predefined sets of security tasks in place for that position. What does that mean? So you take on a new hire that's in accounting, a new hire that's in marketing, new hire that's in sales, service, whatever it be. You should be able to go in and say, okay, this person is part of our marketing group. There's a checkbox that says, okay, when they're part of the marketing group, they're part of this security group. So that they automatically only have access to the data that's part of that security group. Then you want to constantly review and update that. It's not enough to just do it once. You want to constantly get audit reports of who has access to what data and constantly review that. Least privilege access means that you want people to, by default, not have access to data, and then they have to be granted access to that data. You want to make sure that they have the least amount of privilege. Basically, if somebody does not need access to that data to do their job, they should not have the access to that data. Again, this is something we come across quite often, is that companies will have a shared folder that everything gets dumped into, and the people in that company should not have access to the data that's in there. Copilot is going to find that data if that user has access to it and is going to share that data. On a regular basis, you want to review your user management structure and make sure that it's constantly updated and aligned with what you want to happen. Network segmentation is also very important in either hospitality or healthcare or any company. Here's a very, very typical usage for user segmentation. Network segmentation would be that if you have if you let's say you're a hospital or you're a hospitality and you have a guest Wi-Fi system, you want to make sure that guest Wi-Fi system is at an entirely different network segment than what you have uh, for your current users, because once they get access in there, they're going to be there's a potential for being breached. That could be the same for manufacturing, and you have manufacturing equipment. As much as possible, you want that manufacturing equipment on its own network segment and not part of the production. Patch management is going to be really, really key in this. So basically, you want to make sure that your systems are always patched and also that it is not on the responsibility of the user to patch those systems, that it is an automated patch system. Actually, I'm going to repeat myself. I'm going to talk about that in a second. Bug fixes are obviously part of patch management system. Your patches should be automated. With our clients, we automate their server patches are happening on a daily basis. The user patches are happened on a scheduled basis. And we also send out notifications to the point of contacts at our client to let them know that, hey, your scheduling patches for next Thursday. 
Why do we let them know ahead of time? Well, the reason we let them know ahead of time is that a lot of times when you do an update to a system, it requires a reboot. We want that point of contact to know that, hey, listen, you just got a bunch of calls from users saying that their computer's rebooted. We want to make sure you they know ahead of time, yep, no, that's because they're doing the patches today. But you want to have regularly scheduled patches so that you know when they're going to happen. And you want to make sure there's a testing process for patches. We have a process where we test patches before we deploy them out to our clients. If you are doing your own patch management, let's say you have a thousand users or 2000 users, you may not be able to do it in a test environment, but what you should do is pick a particular group or segment of computers, do the patching on those computers first, let them run for a period of time before you deploy them on a mass scale. Really important so that you don't get inundated with calls. <clears throat> you want to have a list of approved applications that are allowed to run Copilot. You may not want every PowerPoint presentation or every Excel document to run it. Inside the application itself, you want to make sure you have control policies in place. What does that mean? So inside the applications, we see this a lot with accounting applications in particular, where the client will just add a new user to the accounting application and not go through the process of going inside the accounting application and make sure that they only have access to the parts of that accounting application that they should have. Again, this is gonna be really key because there's going to be certain applications that Copilot is going to be able to go in and search and utilize. You wanna make sure that the user only has access to it. And again, if accounting application, they may have access to payroll through that accounting application. They may not know how to get to it themselves, but Copilot might be able to find it. And then obviously monitoring applications for abusive uh, logging. This is going to be really key for those of you who are governed by the SEC or something or some similar event. All right, so <clears throat> you always want to use built-in encryption whenever you have an application. Whatever it is, data is ability to be encrypted, you want to encrypt it. Two-factor authentication. I talked about this. I, I talked about this already. Again, I'll probably talk about it one more time before we're done. Two-factor authentication is key. You want to implement it everywhere and anywhere that you can within any application that you have. Again, using protocols that are encrypted. Email encryption is going to be extremely important, especially with Copilot. You want to make sure that your email, what is encrypted, the only people that, that any critical email, not all email, but any email that has sensitive data, you want to make sure that it is encrypted. Two things on this. One, it's very easy to set up with Microsoft. You can set it up. What we do is we have a certain keyword. And whenever that keyword is in the body of an email, the email is automatically encrypted. So it doesn't take much effort on the person to encrypt that email. The other thing that I would tell you is that if you receive information from the outside on data and that email is not encrypted, and you might look saying, well, geez, I can't believe they sent us an unencrypted email. It's now, you, you can't control what people send you. However, if you reply to that email message, you wanna make sure that you encrypt that email going back out because you are in control of that. And if you do not encrypt that email going out and something happens to that data, you might be on the hook for it because you're the one who sent unencrypted data. So just because you received data that should have been encrypted from a client and wasn't, doesn't mean that you can reply back the same way. You are in charge of that part of the communication. You want to make sure that you have AV. Actually, we're going to go one step further than AV in the next slide. You want to have updating, regular updating on your AV. What you really want to have is what's called EDR. EDR is one step up from AV. Sentinel-1 is the EDR that we use. So EDR is a next level of data protection. You, It will do more analytical data. It'll do the AV part of it, but it'll also do more analytical data. The other thing that you want to do is make sure that your antivirus is also monitored 24 by 7. We have a dedicated security operations team that all they do is monitor AV for alerts because, yes, as you can guess, the bad guys are not necessarily going to hit at 2 p.m. They're going to hit at 2 a.m. when they know that you're not around. You want to have a 24 by 7 desk that is ready to mitigate that and look at what is happening in that, such, in that uh, stack. So here's some of the risks that you have to worry about. They're the same risks that you have without Copilot, but Copilot enhances the risk because if attacker gets in, they can now also use Copilot just like you could, only they could use Copilot 
to their advantage rather than yours. So what should you do to protect yourself? These are the, uh, obviously the key things that you should do be, do to protect your data. All the regular backups are key, but also regular testing of the backups. Employee training, we're going through this now. I'm gonna to touch on a second where, where your team can go through it on a, on, a, on a regular basis. Security software, access controls, network protection. You wanna have strong authentication methods. Yes, this means two-factor authentication. Yes, I'm talking about it again. And yes, I'm gonna talk about it one more time before we're done. In vendor risk management, let's talk about vendor risk management for a moment because I think this is kind of a key thing that doesn't get talked about a lot. One of the questions we don't get asked enough is what is our security and what is what are we doing to protect ourselves? Now, we are very forthcoming and we actually give all of our existing and new clients a document that actually outlines the security that we do and put in place for ourselves. You need to ask all of your vendors, no matter who they are, what do they do to secure your data? This is really, really important. All right, so let's talk about security training. So up on our website, as I mentioned, we offer all of our security training for free to anybody. It's right up on our website. This video will be posted up on our website as well. Every security training that we have, we put up there for free for anybody to watch any time. As I mentioned, we have a 24 by seven security operations center that, control, that governs all of our clients. We don't take on a single client and not do 24 by seven security operations for them. It is critical in this day and age that you should make sure that you also have this for your network as well. Incident response planning. What is incident response planning? So essentially, if something happens, a breach, an issue, or anything like that, you don't wanna try and figure out what your process is while you're going through the middle of a breach. You wanna have that defined before it happens. It is you have so many other things going on, you wanna figure out, okay, do I contact my insurance provider? Do I contact my legal team? Do I contact my IT provider? What do I have to do when the, do I have to do a press release? You wanna have all of that documented out and planned ahead of time before you ever have a breach. Hopefully it never happens, but it's better to have it done ahead of time. We have for free a document that will help you build that instant response plan. No no gotchas, no hitches or anything like that. It is literally a documentation that you can have for free to build your incident response plan. It is fully available. We provide regular security scorecards to our clients. You should also make sure that you're getting a regular security scorecard from your provider. This gives our clients on a regular basis all of the basic things that they could do to secure the network and where they are. Spoiler alert, a lot of these are free. A lot of them do not cost anything. They just need to be done. They're basic implementations that need to be done. You should try and get something similar. Again, we do it for our clients. You should make sure that you have it. This one is chargeable, but it's a, it's a nominal fee. We actually built out templates that you can use for your entire organization that define your security process from what is our email policy? What is our remote access policy? What is this policy? This is really handy. We're actually starting to see a lot of insurance providers requesting this. Those of you that are going through SOC or going through some similar certification, you're going to be asked to have this as well. We actually have a lot of templates already written out that you can modify and use. We also have a dedicated cybersecurity division. Now, why do we have a dedicated cybersecurity division? Well, think of it this way. The dedicated cybersecurity division is sort of like us having a cardiologist on staff. On staff. These people deal just specifically with security and that's all they do. That is, they, they are specialists in this. They go to a deep extent on what they can do and what they can work on. This is all they focus on. So we have this available to any of our clients at any time. And we also keep them at an arm's length so that they are outside. We use them to audit our own network as a matter of fact. Hate it if they ever find something. All right, weekly cybersecurity tips. You can sign up everybody on your team to get our weekly cybersecurity tips. These are things that are happening in the industry right now. We wanna make sure that you are up to date and they include quick best practices on security. Okay, so what did we talk about? So one, we talked about what Microsoft Copilot is. We talked about the cool things that you can do with Microsoft Copilot. 
But then we talked about the security that went with Copilot and the risks that are involved. Then we talked about some of the settings on how to lock down and protect yourself from that security. And then we talked about general security as a whole. That's everything that we covered today. I hope this was extremely beneficial for you and I hope you were able to take something away from it. Please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions whatsoever. Anybody on our team is more than happy to help you work through them. Very excited about this product. I think it's going to be a huge, huge asset to everybody in every industry. Thank you so much. Have an absolutely amazing day.